Hello and welcome to our butterfly service. I'm so glad that you could join us today. My name is Janet Miller and I am the sister at Bryan House Children's Hospice. We hope you find what follows helpful and I look forward to meeting you in person as circumstance allow. So on behalf of myself and my colleagues, we would like to wish you and your families all the very best as you remember your children today. Down below the surface of a quiet pond lived a colony of water bugs. They were a happy colony, living far away from the sun. For many months they were very busy, scurrying over the soft mud on the bottom of the pond. They did notice that every once in a while, one of their colony seemed to lose interest in going about. Clinging to the stem of a pond lily, it gradually moved out of sight and was seen no more. Look, said one of the water buds to any other one of your colony is dimming up the lily stalk. Where do you think she is going? Up, up, up. It's it. Slowly went even as they watched a water bug dear disappeared. disappeared from sight. Its friends wanted and wanted, but it didn't return. That's funny, said one water bug to another. Wasn't she happy here? asked the second. Where do you suppose she 
went when you answered? No one had an answer. They were greatly puzzled. Finally, one of the water bugs, a leader in the colony, gathered his friends together. I have an idea. The next one of us who climbs up the lily stalk must promise to come back and tell us where he or she went and why. We promise, they said, solemnly. One spring day, not long after, the very water bug who had suggested the plan found himself climbing up the lily stalk. Mm -hmm. Up, up, up he went. Before he knew what was happening, he had broken through the surface of the water and fallen onto the broad green lily pad above. When he awoke, he looked about with surprise. He couldn't believe what he saw. A starting, starting change had come to his whole old body. He movement revealed for the silver wings, wings and again tall even even as he struggled he felt an impulse to move his wings the warmth of the sun soon dried the moisture from the new body he moved his wings again and suddenly found himself up above the water he had become a dragon Spooky and dimpling, great curves. Great. In great curves, he flew through the air. He felt um, accelerated in the new atmosphere. Yeah. By and by, the new dragonfly light, lighted happily on a lily pad to rest. Then it was that he had chance to look below to the bottom of the pond. Why, he was right above his old friends, the water bugs. There, there they were scurrying around, just as he had been doing some time before. The dragonfly remembered the promise, the next one of us who climbs up the lily stalk will come back and tell us where he or she went and why. Without thinking, the dragonfly darted down. Suddenly, he hit the surface of the water and bounced away. Now that he was a dragonfly, he could no longer go into the water. I can return, he said in dismay. At least I tried. But I can't keep my promise. Even if I could go back, not one of the water bugs would know me in my new body. I guess I'll just have to wait until they become dragonflies too. Then they'll understand what has happened to me and where I went. And the dragonfly winged off happily into his wonderful new world of sun and air. Our reading is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, reading from verse 13. The people brought children to Jesus, hoping that he might touch them. The disciples shooed them off, but Jesus was irate and let them know it. Don't push these children away. Don't ever get between them and me. These children are at the very centre of life in the kingdom. Mark this. Unless you accept God's kingdom in the simplicity of a child, you'll never get in. Then, gathering the children up in his arms, he laid his hands on them and blessed them. Butterflies. They look so beautiful, so majestic, so delicate, all at the same time. They're with us for a season inspiring us, moving us, blessing us. And then they fly on and disappear out of sight, leaving us with treasured memories. I'm sure we're all very familiar with the life cycle of a butterfly and how it changes from egg to caterpillar, caterpillar to chrysalis, and chrysalis to fully fledged butterfly. Unsurprisingly, many cultures use butterflies as symbols to represent change 
and transformation, courage and endurance, renewal and hope. Christians also use butterflies as symbols of resurrection and new life, believing that death is not the end and that there is more to come. It is in all these senses that we and other children's hospices use the butterfly as the symbol for our remembrance services. Our children have changed us. They've transformed us and we'll never be the same again. We will have watched and wondered at their lives, their struggles and endurance. And their very fact of having been with us gives us a renewed sense of focus and drive. We have a much clearer understanding of the precious gift of life and who and what really matter. None of this is to take away from the pain of our loss and the hurt of separation. What could? Instead, the butterfly symbol asks us to focus on the gift of their legacy and what our children have left in our lives, which inspires us, moves us and blesses us. They may be out of sight for a while, but we still feel their presence and their memory warms our hearts. In a moment, I'm going to invite us to take part in the butterfly making activity. And hopefully you've already discovered that all you need to make the butterfly can be found in the pack, along with some instructions for what to do. Might I suggest before we do the folding that we write on the unformed butterfly shape the things about our children that we'd like to say thank you for. Maybe we'd like to say thank you for some qualities in their personality, like their resilience or sense of humour. Maybe we'd like to say thank you for the memory of a time we shared together. Or maybe we just want to say thank you for all that they were and still are to us. In which case, why not just spend time writing their names slowly and purposefully, embellishing it with colour and design. As you write on the butterfly and then create it, you're going to hear Chloe Rose Moyle sing The Blessing. The song is based on some words you can find in the Bible, which ask the Lord to bless and cherish us and our loved ones. May I invite you to hear these words as a prayer for you and your families.
So how did you get on with your butterfly? This is mine. Um, I was able to choose the colour of paper and I went for orange because when I think of our brown house children, I think bright. Um, as you can tell, I'm not especially arty, so I wasn't able to, to do much that's creative, but I did write on um, a few words that sum up for me um, our brown house children, um, which is words like fun and a laughter and play and mess because we're very good at mess at Brown House because we like playing a lot. And you can see from our pictures, we like our glitter and we like our paint. I've also been wondering where I'm going to put this butterfly and I think I'm going to put it on my notice board in my office. Not only will it brighten up the notice board, but it'll remind me of our Brown House children every day. I wonder where you'll put yours. We're going to remember all our Brown House children now as we hear Kerry Rogers sing the song, Angel. Spend all your time waiting for that second chance For a break that would make it okay there's always some reason to feel not good enough And it's hard at the end of the day I need some distraction, a oh, beautiful release Memories seep through my veins Let me be empty find some peace tonight in the arms of the angel fly away from here from this dark cold hotel room and the endlessness that you feel So tired of the straight line And everywhere you turn There's vultures and thieves at your back The storm keeps on twisting You keep on building the lies That you make up for all that you lack It all make no difference one last time it's easier to believe in this sweet madness all oh, this glorious sadness that brings me to my knees in the arms of the angel fly From this dark, cold hotel room And the endlessness that you feel You are part from the wreckage Of your silent reverie You're in the arms
We come now to a time of prayer and you may wish to bow your head, perhaps put your hands together or simply lay them in your laps. So let us pray. I begin with a quote. Its author is unknown and it reads like this. A butterfly lights beside us like a sunbeam and for a brief moment its glory and beauty belong to our world. But then it flies on again and though we wish it could have stayed, we feel so lucky to have seen it. Eternal love, thank you for the children we remember today and for the memories we created together that are so precious. Help us to trust that our children are in your safekeeping and close to your heart. And when we feel the sadness and the stillness of the chrysalis, help us also to remember the hope of the resurrection butterfly. Thank you too for all who shared this difficult stage of our lives with us. We think of our families, friends, medical staff, and all those at Bryan House. Please bless each and every one of them. And one day, bring us all to that home you have prepared for us, where there is no more sadness or separation, and our love can find eternal expression and completeness. Amen. I journey on not because it's easy to take the next uncertain step, but because for reasons I cannot comprehend, I have been granted the gift of life, which even though you fought so hard to stay was denied you. I journey on, not because of my bravery, for believe me, your death has left me fearful and overwhelmed, but because your courage inspires me to hang on, hoping for a better, brighter day. I journey on, not because I want to, Truthfully, on some days without you here, I simply don't. But because your legacy makes a difference, each day I will say your name and sing your story. You journey on, not because you remain with us, but because you walk with angels now and understand the painful questions whose answers my limited vision cannot see. We journey on, you and I, the visible and invisible, won't put together. Not because life is as it was when I could hold you, but because where there is love, the journey is eternal, and nothing, not even death, can break the bond we share.
Thank you so much for joining us today. And may I, on behalf of all of us, just say a massive thank you to everyone who's participated in the service and a big thank you to everyone whose hard work has made it possible for us to participate in this service online. It's very much appreciated. And on behalf of Brian House and Trinity Hospice, may we send our thoughts and best wishes and bid you peace. In the words of a Celtic blessing, deep peace of the running wave to you, deep peace of the flowing air to you, deep peace of the quiet earth to you, deep peace of the shining stars to you, deep peace of the infinite peace to you. Mm -hmm.